Hey friends, this is Krista Alicia. I'm super excited to be with y'all today. Um, as promised, I'm coming on live with a group of absolute powerhouse women who are all pioneering the government and the family and the church mountains. And each one of these ladies has been a part of the Arise Women's Summit. Uh, it actually all came together through a prophetic dream that I had uh, where Lou Engel was there and there were women standing around him and this one petite little dark haired girl with a scroll came up and put the scroll in my face and said, Krista, I have to tell you the words of this prophecy because you're part of its fulfillment. And uh, when I launched the Speak Life project, I got an email from that girl and uh, about fell out of my car when I opened a video that she sent me of her and Lou Engel talking about an adoption movement and about Roe v. Wade. And I'm like, who is that girl? And because I recognized her and the Holy Spirit said, it's the girl from your dream. And I was just absolutely floored. So literally my relationship with her, her name is Danielle Helmer. A lot of you guys maybe have heard about her, or if you've been following the women's movement that uh, we're pioneering, you've heard about her. You've heard about Donica Hudson. She has... Um, a governmental call on her life, a governmental intercession. She has done assignments with uh, people like Dutch Sheets. Um, she has wrote a book called Pray America Great Again. And the revelation that she adds to the things that we're getting because I don't know anything about government. <laughs> I just go and I see what Jesus says. And then I come back and I tell people it's amazing to hear from her too. And uh, the strategy that she has is just amazing. And then, you know, my friend Harmony Klingenmeyer, she's been on Elijah Fire, super anointed mama bear, like absolute mama bear, so grounded in the word and in the spirit. She uh, has wrote a book called um, Hear Their Voices. And another one she's working on is Kitchen Table Kingdom. She has adopted and fostered numerous children and she's just so amazing and I love her to death. I have my friend Monica Santalago on here today from Abide to Love. Her family, not only, I mean, just, okay. So she's literally adopted special needs kids from out of the country. And then she has her own children. This woman is... <sighs> She's so sweet. She's such a lover. And her and her husband, um, the faith that they have is literally inspiring to me and to my family. They are pioneering the uh, foster care and adoption reform right now through their ministry, which she's going to tell you more about. And then there is my sister, Ashley Shell, uh, Shuel. She is amazing. Also, she has been literally feet, boot, boots on the ground in front of clinics, in front of government houses. And the Lord has actually given her an assignment that she is going to share with you guys today too. Um, she has a incredible gift for prophetic intercession as well. And today really what uh, my heart was to hop on here for was just to kind of share with all of you what we believe the Lord is saying now that we are post row and how this is not the end of the war. This is a major battle that has been won. And we need to now really um, rally ourselves. We need to be asking the Lord for clear vision moving forward. And we need to be prepared to build and continue to keep pressing into this thing so that Jesus can have his full reward and so that our country can experience the revival that Jesus has promised us. Amen. So um, I'm going to bring all my guests on and um, we're just going to go from there. Okay, guys, could you do me a favor? Could you please like this? Um, you know, some platforms like to suppress any ministry that is 
you know, speaking on conservative values. And so when you actually throw up hearts and you throw up likes, um, it boosts the visibility in the algorithm. And if you could share this, if you could tag somebody, especially if you know another woman who or a family who has been interested in foster care or adoption, that's not going to be the only thing that we talk about today. But each person on here is going to give you strategies for how you can move forward and how you can advance the kingdom of God in the season that we're in. Amen. So share, share, share. And um, I'm going to bring on all my friends. Hey, Ashley, Danielle, Donica, Hi. Harmony, Monica. Yay. <laughs> Look at all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've heard this many people on a seminar before. <laughs> so, guys, who uh, feels like going first? I almost feel like Donica should just open us up in prayer. And maybe, Donica, I actually feel like you, there's something that you need to open with, I feel like, to give us a baseline for what um, what's going to set the stage for the rest of this live. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'd be happy to. And just so everybody knows, we didn't plan anything. This is coming from the Holy Spirit. So let's yeah. pray. Yes. Lord, I thank you so much for these powerhouse women that have chosen to take on your mantle when it's not convenient to foster and adopt when it's not easy to uh, go and minister all over the country when it's not convenient because we love you. God, we're on here for one reason, because of our covenant with you, because your son, Jesus, shed his blood for us and gave us eternal life. And for anybody who's coming on now or is, is logging in right now, we bless you. We thank you for the God who, who made us and created us, even in the womb, is blessing us. Lord, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory for what you're doing in this country, Father. You, these women have prayed and we have, we have taken the baton from many who were before us as intercessors for decades, for almost 50 years to see Roe v. Wade under, overturned, God, so that life, and life more abundantly, according to John 10, 10, can flourish in America so that the national curse that has been holding about back revival, one of those curses, could be broken. We rejoice. We know that you did it, Lord. You are Lord of Lord, King of Kings, and the government is upon your shoulder, Lord. So we thank you that you are using us as women in this earth, to bring about your kingdom on the earth. And Lord, you told us all to pray third heaven prayers. And you gave us the, the example in scripture of the Lord's prayer, where Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we know there's no abortion in heaven. We know, Father God, there is no murder in heaven. We know that there is life and love and healing and wholeness. And there is joy unspeakable, Father. And we thank you that the laws of our land are beginning to line up with heaven. Father, we adore you. We worship you. We thank you that you gave us a covenant that we can hold and cling to. We thank you that even your civil covenants are stored in heaven, Lord God, and that those covenants, including our U.S. Constitution, are recognized in heaven. And so, God, we cling to the fact that you blessed that covenant originally, Lord and that you have not left it. When you look at America, you still see us through the covenant where we called upon you, where we asked you to bless us, Father God. In our Declaration of Independence, in all 50 state constitutions, those are civil covenants that acknowledged you, called upon you, and asked you to bless us. Therefore, in your eyes, Lord, we are a Christian nation and you will uphold what we uphold. We choose not to divorce you. We choose not to marry Baal, but Father, we are yours. We are the children of your kingdom, God. And we recovenant with you, even this day, God, as we will be praying later on. We thank you that you have blessed us. We do pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our most sacred honor to one oh. another. Lord, to preserve this country, to preserve life and life more abundantly. And God, we pray and we bless those Supreme Court justices, Lord God. Yes. They have chosen life and not yes. death. That will be blessed. And as one of my sisters on here said, uh, even John Roberts' gravestone will be rewritten because of his concurrence, God. We Ooh. thank you, God, that you call us as lawmakers on this earth 
to legislate on earth as it is in heaven. And we bless those lawmakers who are legislating on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, God, that this is your perfect will, that your word is true today, yesterday, and 100,000 years from now, that your word is stored in heaven. And we live it. We breathe it. We thank you, God, that you have given us a playbook to live by that brings peace, God. Yes. And for peace to cover this land. We pray yes. right now in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every uh, chaotic uh, night of rage, uh, any vandalism, all of that that has pr been planned, any murder plots, any assassination attempts, we take authority over those according to Luke 10, 19. We take authority over all manner of evil. We send the angels of heaven and the host of heaven to destroy every demonic platform of sabotage, yes. of assassination attempts, yes. of destruction, rage towards a, to uh, uh, pro-life clinics, towards pro-life uh, leaders and those who are elected to office. We send them out now across the nation to squash every demonic assignment against life in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Holy now, God, Father, we come to you in humility and we thank you, Father God, that everything that we are about to share will empower all those who are listening. Father, we thank you that you have given us life and more abundantly and that we choose to perpetrate that life as those who have wombs. We speak life to our wombs yes, and Lord. to our nation. Yes, God. That there shall be no more death. And God, no. I thank you for the strategies that are coming now that we are in the battle of the states to preserve life state by state. And I pray that America would not have to be divided into no. states that serve the Lord Jesus and goat states that choose to uh, murder babies. We pray, Father God, that those people who are your believers and who are your lawmakers would rise up in all 50 states of America and push back and cause their state to serve you, Lord, and to promote life yeah. and life more abundantly in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you for other organizations that are partnering with us. I thank you for the organizations that all of these women represent right here on this call. I thank you that you are using them. And I speak life to them. I speak life to adoption. I speak life to foster care. I speak life to these, uh, the stateside Women's Arise conferences that will be going from state to state. Mm -hmm. Lord, empower us to empower others. Encourage the lawmakers. Give people today in each state courage in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And for those lawmakers right now who are facing runoffs, like my dear friend, Dr. Elizabeth Enns in South Carolina, who's pro-life, and they are yes. smearing her because yes. of that. I pray for every one of Elizabeth Enns who are pro-life, everybody who will be in the primaries and every and, and in runoffs and all of those who will be in the election in November, those who are pro-life, God, we pray for them to emerge yes. as victors because they are doing this according to your will on earth as it is in heaven. God, we ask that you would protect them. We ask, Father God, that as we move in everything that you're calling us to do and share today, that you would fill our mouths with your word. Yes. We thank you that your word doesn't return void, but it accomplishes what you purpose for it in the earth. And that is life and life abundantly. That is to be blessed. Every person who is tuned in to be blessed, to live the abundant life, despite what we see happening in our nation, God, you have given us authority authority over all evil and we shall not run we shall not fear but rather god we stand firm in our faith we yes. stand firm in our understanding of the covenant the blood shed that you gave for us to enter into this covenant that seals us for heaven and, hey the lord says if, if i am for you who can be against you so god we thank you that you are for us and we bless this broadcast in the name of jesus Ooh, my goodness. Amen. I feel the glory. Ooh. Girl, my God, the anointing is so strong right now. I'm like having a hard time getting my, my life together over here. Um, uh, whew. okay, hold on. <laughs> Jesus, help me. I just want to share as you're getting together, Krista, yes. this overturning of Roe v. Roe v. Wade has been God's plan all along. 
uh, several years ago, my media partner and I, Jim Quick, went to the March for Life in Washington, and we interviewed quite a few people. My favorite was Jim Daly, who's president of Focus on the Family, who actually survived abortion attempt. And so uh, when we came back, God did something that absolutely blew my mind. When Jim and I came back, we had met at a church midway in Virginia to drive to D.C., and we were the only, his, his, his car was the only car left in the parking lot. And God had been speaking us to us about the fact that our heavenly uh, father sees from heaven and that he, ha he had been actually confirming things with pennies. OK, with Abraham Lincoln pennies. And this meant something to me because, you know, right now there's a push to discredit all founding fathers. All right. And uh, we have founding fathers that were godly men and who wrote documents that are stored in heaven. So when we got back to Jim's car. He walked up to it and looked down, nobody else in the parking lot, this bright penny. He picks it up and he said, you're not going to believe this. And I looked with incredulity in his hand. And here we are coming back from the March for Life by his car is a penny. And the year on it was 1973, the year of Roe v. Wade. To us, that was a sign that God sees this and he is going to reverse this, that all of our efforts are not in vain, that we do have a godly heritage, despite what the globalists have paid many of uh, branding people in America to push the opposite uh, narrative. We are a godly country and we love the Lord Jesus. And that is knit into the very fabric and being of our documents that are stored in heaven. So this is God's plan. Yeah. Come on. Absolutely. 100% God's plan. Um, whew, man, I felt the anointing really strong again. Um, I just felt, I saw Tata Har Harvey on here in the comments. She's from the Navajo Nation. Her and her uh -huh. husband, Ron, really blessed me when I was with Genevieve Skidmore in Navajo Nation in Arizona. Uh, a couple months ago. And so I just wanted to say, hey, I'm Genevieve on. Skidmore, who she's actually in, I believe, South Dakota right now. She would be on here with us, our First Nations sister from the Lakota Sioux tribe. But she's opening another uh, Naomi house in uh, South Dakota, which is incredible because I saw that so far the four states that have uh, became sanctuaries for life. Uh, one of them was South Dakota, I believe. So, and then the other one was Missouri, which is incredible because the send was just there. And that is where Danielle uh -huh. home is at. And uh, so the intercession that's been coming up from there. So just so amazing to see that. And um, our friend Devin O'Neill with uh, uh, Voices of Mercy, who's been leading the Trail of Joy tour, his state um, of Louisiana became a sanctuary for life also. So just really amazing to see the way that God is connecting all of this. And even with, you know, our hearts to redeem the land and with the First Nations people, we know that it, it the abortion issue and the issue with the Native Americans, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this is, we are directly mm -hmm. confronting um, the two, two major giants that um, have been, you know, causing so much destruction in our, our land for, for years. And it all goes back to that issue of covenant, right? Yes. Covenant. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I was asking the Lord, um, you know, I was just praying into the covenant, his covenant. And he just spoke to me and he said, Krista, I have never broken my covenant with America. Amen. I have never <laughs> turned away. He actually, he showed me a picture of the rainbow. And, you know, when you look at the rainbow from heaven's perspective, it looks like a ring. And so I'm asking God about the secrets of the rainbow, his rainbow. And he's saying, he told me that it was in the shape of a circle because his covenants never cease. They're always ongoing and he is always um, extending them to the people, you know, yeah. and to earth and to the, the creation that he loves and that he planned for. And um, then I, I asked him, well, why is it that on earth we only see it as an as an ark? And he said, because I am always inviting everyone who will to enter into my covenant. 
Amen. And that's why, it, and I was like, oh my gosh, you're so sweet. Um, <laughs> Cause that's just my relationship with him. But really this, we are uh, in, the, huh? In, in the, this, um, what you just said about the broken covenant, it ties yeah. into the scrolls. Yes. Can I read this really quick. It was a word. It's called yes. the great divorce. And the Lord gave me this word. And he said, oh, America, the beautiful. There was a great divorce that took place that was never part of the covenant. The great divorce called separation of church and state that was never even mentioned in my civil covenant. I am calling the church government to marry the civil government anew. Yes, I am a God of remarriage, reclamation and renewing of the covenant. As I have done with Israel, so shall I do for America the beautiful. To unseat Baal and Jezebel, the remnant must remarry. Covenant destroys illegitimacy. It destroys the orphan spirit and fatherlessness. In Esther 6, when King Xerxes asked for the scrolls to be read to him and found record of Mordecai alerting him to the previous assassination attempt, it was recorded on earth as it now is in heaven through the scriptures. When we who are the body of Christ make civil covenants with God, they are recorded in heaven. And that was from my prayer journal on 322 2017 in, in my book. So that ties in with everything you're saying. And every person on this call is doing something about that with your ministries and, and overturning Roe v. Wade and abortion and uh, fostering care and uh, orphans. I mean, it's, it's amazing what God has assembled in this whole group. Yeah. Donica covenant makes family. It's, it's marriage, Amen. you know, and that's where the two become one. Right. And, um, one of the things that the Lord was telling me about covenant, I said, well, God, how did we break your covenant? You know, cause I know that, um, when Roe v. Wade was, was passed in the seventies, that it was really because the church was asleep. Um, <laughs> but being asleep doesn't necessarily break covenant. Right. And so I was praying into that. And he said, because they allowed their comforts to be their God. And they allowed their, the blessings that I gave them to become idols. And he said, and then the church moved away from true oneness and intimacy and sold outness to me and have now tried to incorporate me into their lives when I actually asked for a life in exchange for a life. And he said, um, he said, I poured out myself on the cross. I poured every last drop of myself out on the cross because I desired every last bit of my bride. I didn't just want a little portion. I wanted it all. And, um, that's where we're at is that, you know, God is releasing that fresh, like, you know, death to self. You know, when you get married, it's no longer just about you. You have a person in your life who's you love and you're called to honor. And it's not always easy, um, but we do it for the sake of love. And God is coming for a bride. He's coming for a family. He's not coming for orphans. And so when God says, build my kingdom, it's about building his house and his house is made of people. It's not four walls. It's not brick and mortar. It's sons and daughters. And so even recovenant, covenanting ourselves back to God and saying, God, you are our family, you are our father, we choose oneness, you know, with each other, even again, if we have differences, right? Choosing unity, choosing, choosing love, like you prayed for Jesus in John 17, and then also taking action to um, display that oneness um, through steps in, in government so that the land can be blessed, right? We're called to rule and to reign, um, not to let everything go to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> We're supposed to be bringing the kingdom of heaven into our realm of influence. Amen. Donica, I love that. Um, and Guys, if you, most of these ladies on here, they all have a book uh, or they have a website with resources. Donica's book is amazing. I would definitely suggest that you go check her website out. It's obvious there on her name. I also have um, all of that in the description on this video. And um, 
Harmony, do you have uh, anything to share or Ashley? Yeah, yes. So, you know, as you guys are talking, you mentioned peace. The Lord uh, this morning really began to talk to me about uh, the fruit of righteousness. And that kept coming up again and again in my spirit that the fruit of righteousness is peace. And so I was looking at some scriptures about that. And he took me to Isaiah 32, starting in verse 14. It says, the fortress will be abandoned, the noisy city deserted, citadel and watchtower will become a wasteland forever, the delight of donkeys, a pasture for flocks, till the spirit is poured out on us from on high, and the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest. The Lord's justice will dwell in the desert, his righteousness live in the fertile field and the fruit of that righteousness will be peace it its effect will be quietness and confidence forever my people will live in peaceful dwelling places in secure homes in undisturbed places of rest though hail flattens the forest and the city is level completely how blessed you will be, sowing your seed by every stream and letting your cattle and donkeys range free. It's such a, a beautiful picture. Really, the Lord is, this is, yesterday was a Pentecost moment in our history. Yesterday, I wore white. I wore my, um, my uh, Catherine Coleman dress today. The Lord told me to put it on for suffrage. Yesterday, wow. he told me, I, this is a new day of suffrage. It's like when the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was passed. Something has shifted over the land, and, mm -hmm. and the, the, there's been an outpouring of his spirit. And I, I also see so strongly in the spirit realm, you can't be on the fence anymore. You can't be on the fence anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and we need... We need unity in the body of Christ because this, what has happened in the spirit realm is division has, lines have been drawn. There's been a, a, a spiritual division that's happened. It's become very evident if you are pro-life or if you are pro-choice. If you are pro the baby in the womb and the mama and adoption and foster care or you are pro murder like it has become extremely evident and and it's caused the division in the spirit realm and because of that we need an even greater outpouring of unity in the body of christ we need to decide we're not going to fight about things that don't matter anymore we have to decide that we're willing to die for unity and we have to decide we're willing to lay down our lives that means our petty, uh, our, 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 our favorite uh, do doctrines that are not essential. That means, that means um, coming into unity uh, with, with born-again Catholics and Lutherans. Even though we don't agree with them on every doctrine, we must come into agreement with those who have given their lives to Jesus, with Baptists, the Southern Baptist Synod, who is carrying an anointing for this nation, the Southern Baptist Synod, who has spent the last year repenting of, of, of sexual assault and of mishandling of spiritual authority. God is calling the Southern Baptist Synod back to himself, back to revival, and back to a position of, of authority in this land. And as a charismatic believer, I say I'm willing to lay down what doesn't matter and come into agreement with them. I'm willing to come into agreement with those who are carrying the message of life. Why? Because the lines have been drawn in the spirit realm. And, it, and it's just like, you know, it, it's like the day after the 19th Amendment or the day after segregation was broken in this land. There were lines drawn and you had to make a decision. Where did your family stand? Where did your family stand on racism when segregation came down? You had to make a decision. When, when biracial marriage became legal, your family had to make a decision about where you stood. You didn't get to stand or, or ride the fence any longer. You had to make a choice. And I feel that choice going forward in the spirit realm. I feel it. And it, it's costly. 
it's co- it's costing us something friends but i'm telling you that the that the fruit of righteousness will be peace the fruit of righteousness will be peace and you can you can even tell in the last 24 hours where there has been righteousness in the land and when there ha- where there has been unrighteousness because there has been peace but there has also been warfare and there has been attack and there has been destruction and there has been you know a people coming against pregnancy centers and against houses of hope and the attack has been on people like me i mean who am i i'm just a mama who raised 19 children out of foster care but i have a target on my back and why is that it's not because i want women to die it's not because uh, you know we give in to the propaganda that they're selling right now that women are going to die uh, because of miscarriages and and that all of that is it's propaganda. It's not real. It's not true. It's because I'm pro life. They have nothing else on us. So I need I need all of us and every person listening to this right now. I need you to choose unity. I need you to choose to not fight about things that don't matter any longer because lines have been drawn in the spirit. Amen. That is so on point, Harmony. And that, I mean, even your name, Harmony, we need to have harmony in the body of Christ. You know, the Lord just recently had been talking to me about some spiritual warfare that I have personally been going through. And um, he said, they've formed a demonic uh, confederacy against you. And I said, a demonic confederacy. I didn't even know what that was. Um, And he said, they have chosen the wrong side of the fence. And um, the Lord showed me that, and he even spoke, he said, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, he said, I am drawing a line in the fence or in the sand and no longer can you ride the fence and it's choose this day who you will serve, choose life or choose death. And we have to be on the right side of the kingdom, not just on the right side of history, but on the right side of the kingdom. And, um, you know, demons know how to work in unity. Demons know how to work in unity because they understand the power of unity. I mean, you, you think about the, um, you know, the Tower of Babel, right? How they were building this tower to reach heaven, to make a name for themselves. It was a totally ungodly purpose. They were directly going against what God had, you know, told them to do, which was to fill the earth. So scatter, travel around, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth. And instead they stay in one po- in one part and they want to build a monument to themselves, right? And uh, be their own gods. And so God scattered their language, but he made this really interesting comment. He said, look at the way that they work together nothing will be impossible for them. And that's why he had to scatter their language. Because when we work together, that is when we become an unstoppable force that no power in hell can stand against. Amen. And if we could just get that, you know, and really honestly, like Catholics are some of the most pro-life people that are have, have been taking, you know, the stand for life and being in government and and caring for the single mom and the orphan. And so um, it's it's just amazing. I love what you said. And I I really pray that all of us can really get a hold of that and can press into that um, and be asking the Lord more for more revelation on exactly what he meant when he prayed in John 17, that we would be one as he is is one with the Father, and that we would be known by our love. That is, you know, Christianity is really 
simple when you just boil it down to God so loved us that he gave his life. So we give our life in return out of the love that we've experienced. And we choose to be one with our brother and sister in Christ the same way that we have been made one again with the Father. It's not complicated. The greatest commandment that God left us with, that Jesus left us with, was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and to love your neighbor or your tribal brother and sister is really what Jesus was saying in that because they were the tribes of Israel and they were really all family that had descended from you know, the, their matriarch and patriarch. Abraham and Sarah, right? Love your tribal brother and sister as you love yourself the way that my love has been revealed to you. Amen. So Ashley, what do you have on the covenant? I know the Lord has been giving you a lot about that. Yeah, I I love Harmony hearing how the Lord ministered to you for what to wear because Today, I wore red and white, not only for America, but for the blood of Jesus and the cleansing over the United States of America. And um, it's just, uh, it's such a, I'm still relishing in the glory of what our God did, what our God did. He did this. And we get to partner with the King of Kings, the King of glory. And decree forth heaven's mandate on earth and speak life. And I've just been taking that time to just glory and glory with him and just praise him. It's it's almost unreal. I feel like I'm in a dream. I feel like, like pinch me. You work so hard to, to like, okay, what's next? And then you're like, we're in the what's next spot, you know? And it's like, we're in the what's next spot. But, you know, the Lord had given me a word last year. He said, prepare the nets, prepare the nets. And I believe the women on this call and many who are listening and those that will be listening, you've either got a net prepared or he's showing you a net to get ready for because babies are coming. Foster care children are coming. Like it's it's happening. It's happening. And not just babies, you know, all the way up. And to teens, you know, our Teens Harmony released a powerful word in Tennessee, like just, woo, like it was a holy conviction that was needed in my bones, not just for just a personal reflection, but just in the weight of intercession that God cares for every single one of us. He, he cares for every single one of us. Well, what's so powerful was as um, I was preparing for our Arise segment that we had in Tennessee just a few weeks ago, the Lord was downloading words to me from Jeremiah 6. And I wrestled with him. I thought, do you want me to release this? And I could, I could, never, get, I could never get that release. And I, I, I struggled. I struggled. I was like, Lord, my heart is to be obedient and to speak only what you are saying. And he did. He showed off and showed out. He we <laughs> we went down testimony lane together. And I'm so glad that we did because it, it was powerful. <laughs> it unlocked something. It unlocked something. It just it just opened things up, not just for me personally, but I believe for everybody. But I love the full circle moments that God does because he gives us word personally. He gives us words corporately. And Krista talks a lot about this taking very seriously, meditating, spending time in prayer when he's giving you things, making sure you're releasing those in his timing and his way. I take very seriously daddy's heart. And so what I'm sharing with you is really God's heart. And so before I had left for Tennessee, he had um, had me going through Jeremiah 6, which was a lot about Jerusalem being under siege and showing me the parallel of America under siege and rebellion and and people's ears and eyes closed and not understanding the times that we are in. But this particular verse that he pointed out to me, Jeremiah 6, 16, thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look. Ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and then walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. And he brought it back to memory um, after the summit 
Because what had happened was as we ladies were travailing and praying and contending for life and repentance and just a level of humility I don't think I've ever seen and experienced and the worship hours and hours of just worship. It just, it was, it just had me just completely undone. And, and I'm sure the women can concur on here. I'm still unpacking from, from that time. I, I, it was just, it was such a powerful time, but he brought full circle because what had transpired was as particularly the night that Danielle was leading us in intercession for our nation. He started downloading to me um, things to be praying that were in line with covenant. And he was really putting on my heart covenant, covenant, covenant. And at that time, he had given me a vision of the Capitol in Washington, D.C. And I saw two hands lock, shake hands. And I thought, what is that, Daddy? And Krista did a great job, as she always does, helping with the just the translation of what I was seeing because I was overwhelmed. But God was to God was declaring in that moment that he was he had never broke the covenant like Donica so beautifully explained. We did. We did. But in our repentance and our humility and turning from our wicked ways and coming from the end of ourselves, we were ready to recovenant back with our father. And so he was showing me a prophetic picture of what now has manifested in our earth. Where Roe versus Way, the death decree has been lifted. And now we have this opportunity to recovenant. And as Harmony has said, it's very intentional. It's time to die. It's time to die. See, there's a counterfeit gospel going around that Jesus does what I want. But that's not the real gospel. The gospel is I get to die. I get to take up my cross for the greater good, for God's glory for the unity and love of my brothers and sisters. And marriage is simply practice. So if you're not married yet, there's a lot of practicing you can do. <laughs> Don't rush it. <laughs> do not rush it. So, but to that point with the covenant and that, you know, we have now entered in covenant as a nation through our legislation. We are now being invited in to personally make that conscious decision, no more riding the fence. I'm all in. No matter who comes against me, oppression, persecution, I'm all in. And so his faithfulness is inviting us back into what he's always been waiting for us to do is to stay in covenant with him. And so what's fascinating is, is the ancient past. He brought that word back to me full circle because I will be honest, I wrestled with him. I said, Lord, you gave me a word and I didn't release it. Did I miss you? And he said, no, it was for right now. And so when Krista said, we're going to do this call, I was like, he's like, that's okay. Here we go. And I was like, okay, here we go. Because all I want to do, I don't know about y'all. All I want to do is I, I want to hear my father say, well done. That's all I care about. It's not about the latest word. It's not about an event, a microphone. It, I just want to please my father. It's the greatest joy and peace to know that you are honoring your father. And so when I got home, my family and I are preparing for, for a family vacation. And the Lord showed me, he said, he said, your steps are ordered. You don't even know what you're doing. And I order your steps, girlfriend. And so we have planned a trip like months ago. We are actually traveling to Williamsburg, Virginia in Jamestown. And about an hour from there is Cape Henry. And over there is where America made covenant with God. Pastor Robert Hunt. And he has invited me and he is inviting you today to take covenant oath with him again. It doesn't mean that if you're saved, you've lost salvation. It means I'm recommitting myself. Now that the death decree has been taken off of our country, it is the perfect time for us to re-enter into covenant as a nation 
and personally evaluate and say, I'm all in. Because America, despite what anyone is saying, was for the furtherance of the gospel. There's an American dream, and then there's the gospel. It's about daddy's business. So as a prophetic act with you, and I will somehow figure out how we might can get this copy to you. I'm going to read it out loud. And I just ask you to agree if you are ready to enter back into covenant with Daddy God on behalf of yourself and on behalf of our nation. Because this is what this is what this is the next step. We're going. This is the next step. So I'm going to read it. Ashley. <clears throat> um, it's called it's America's Covenant and it's our covenant promise. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to make sure like, guys, everyone that's on here, this is super important. This is a solemn vow that we are making to God right now. We can't enter, enter into this without having a heart of, of reverence. And so I just wanted to make sure that uh, I just said that, that this is, this is very important. So when we say this, this prayer in agreement with Ashley, um, not only are we making a recommitment to give our lives afresh to Jesus and to the furtherance of the gospel, but we are also standing in the gap on behalf of our nation and the rest of the body of Christ. This is a solemn moment. Okay. Um, and so I just want to make sure that we enter into this with, um, with that in mind and, um, cause it's very holy and, uh, like fresh marriage vows really. And so it's to be done with joy, but also understanding the weight of the vows that we're about to say, and, um, we'll figure out a way to either get the, um, this covenant that Ashley received from the Lord up to everybody. We'll find out a way to do that afterwards and I'll post that on the page. So, um, yeah. So Ashley, go ahead. Yeah. I'm so glad that you, you mentioned that because it, it, it is like, it's, we've had a window of time, you know, God didn't send COVID, but he's used us and he's shown me, get your house in order. Yes. Repent come out from among them. Mm -hmm. No more compromise. So even in taking this, if you don't feel that you're even ready to right now, it's okay. I, I encourage you to take this time today, maybe even later, because when you take it, you're, you're, you're coming and you're saying, I'm all in, I'm turning from my sin. It, it, it is, it is very, very ser serious business. Um, and I, and I do it with absolute reverence and and the and just bridging the scripture of Jeremiah 6 that I shared with you. See, we can't go forward until we understand our history. Mm -hmm. And this is the ancient path. He is the ancient path. I mean he is. He is the word. <laughs> and there's the word no truth there's no life. Yeah. So this this is this is what he's saying. This, we have to you need to understand the foundations of America. And what the people who went before us sacrificed for us. I mean, people died. We talk about getting upset when somebody hurts our feelings on Facebook. People died for the gospel. <laughs> so I'm going to read this covenant um, over us. So our covenant promise in remembrance of this sacred moment in time, we reclaim the holy covenant of 1607. We do hereby dedicate this land, the United States of America, and ourselves to reach the people within these shores with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up godly generations after us. And with these generations, take the kingdom of God to all the earth. May this covenant of dedication remain to all generations as long as this earth remains. And may this land, along with England, be evangelist to the world. May all who see this cross remember what we have done here. And may those who come here to inhabit join us in this covenant and in this most noble work that the Holy Scriptures may be fulfilled. 
before there was any permanent settlement, the United States of America was dedicated to God for all generations. When we speak the covenant, as Donica has shared, it is honored in heaven. It is a contract. And so we have just re-spoken out what was originally spoken and coming in agreement with the synergy of the ages of all of those who have come before us and saying, yes, this is to disciple. This is for the furtherance of the gospel. And so you have just enlisted to die every day. And I just, it's time to die. It's time to die. And so um, the other thing is to, I just want to reiterate, it's important to teach our children the true history of America. Make sure that you're teaching your children the true history of America because that's trying to be erased. And it's trying to be erased, not just in fleshy terms, but just the power of covenant and the power of the Constitution and the things that were written in accordance with the gospel and what Jesus God ordained. So it's very, it's, it's very, very serious. So congratulations. You are recoveting with the Lord. Our United States of America is being recoveted and it's time to get busy. Get your nets ready. Come on. The harvest is coming. <laughs> and I just feel to put this out here. Um, Lord, we just ask right now that if there is anybody on this broadcast, anyone that is seeing or listening to this right now, that they don't know you, God. Maybe they have uh, come into agreement with lies about who you are and about what you think about them. Holy Spirit, I just pray right now that you would reveal Jesus to them, that they would encounter a love that they have never experienced before. God, that you would make yourself so real to them, that they would know that you gave up everything because they, they were priceless and precious to you. That this Christianity thing is not about telling people a bunch of rules that they have to live by in order to please you, but it is about falling in love with the creator of the universe because he loved us first. Wow. Lord, I thank you. And God, I even pray right now that you would move in signs and wonders, that uh, you would begin to heal bodies, that you would tangibly be touching people right now. I even see somebody, um, I feel somebody is watching and you have an abscess tooth and it's on the left side and it's in the upper area, the upper jaw. The Lord is healing that right now in Jesus name. Um, I also feel the Lord, Lord says that there is somebody who is watching. You have had issues with uh, acid reflux, but it's, it's total. It's all it's issues with your entire um, digestive system. And I just heard the word GERD, and the Lord is healing that right now as well. Um, the Lord says there's somebody watching. You have had issues with a left hip, something bursitis in your left hip. It's been extremely painful and um, that at times it's, it's almost been crippling painful. And there's also somebody who has um, on the left side, sciatic issues, and God is healing both of those things right now in Jesus name. Um, there's also somebody you are watching and um, right now you are angry at God. You're angry at God and um, you are are having a really hard time dealing with the um, situation that your life is in. And I believe that you have been str struggling with addiction and that you, ha you currently have um, an issue related to being an addict, that um, your addiction has caused uh, an issue of blood, 
an issue of blood. And right now in Jesus name, I plead the blood of Jesus over your blood. And I command you to be healed right now. And I, I also just pray the Lord says that he has called you to be a light in the darkness and the same kind of darkness that you have lived in. The Lord says, I've actually called you to be a burning flame of my love to go back into the darkness to set captives and prisoners free and the fire of god is falling on your heart right now i see you you're watching this and you're weeping you're watching this and you're weeping and you're feeling his T tangible presence come over you. And that is his burning heart of love coming over you. And you are never going to be the same after this. He is the love that you have been looking for your entire life. Whatever drugs that you were using to try to find an escape from the painful reality that you were living in, they have just been a counterfeit for the Holy Spirit. And you are never going to be the same. I even see the fire of God God coming on your mind right now and on your thoughts and he's rearranging the way that you are have been thinking the patterns of thought that have led you back to destruction and led you back to death and led you back to despair he's breaking it off of you and the lord says that there are some that are on here watching and even this one that i'm prophesying prophesying to you now you grew up without a father You've grown up without a father. You have never understood what it meant to have a good and a loving father that saw you, that uh, cared for you, that provided for you, that told you who you were created to be in God's eyes. And the Lord says, I am going to father you from this moment here on out. I have adopted you. I have chosen you to be my own. You are my son. You are my daughter. No longer are you an orphan. And from each day forward, you will know that you have been fathered by God. I created you for myself. I created you for my own purposes. And my purpose to create you was that you are the delight and the love of my life. I created you to be loved by me. You are the target of my affection, says the Father. You are the target of my divine favor, says the Father. And by no means will anyone snatch you away now that I have chose you to be mine in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. And we release that. We release the spirit of adoption over this broadcast right now. The spirit of adoption. That is the spirit of Elijah that turns the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the children back to the father. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Wow. I keep seeing somebody, you have edema in your legs. When you press in, you can even see your fingerprints and the Lord is healing that. Raise your hands and receive healing and heart conditions, that edema and the heart conditions. And you have said, God, you, you, I don't think how you can do this. God is more than able and willing. Just call out to him in the name of Jesus. Shoo. Hallelujah. Guys, if you are feeling the Lord, if you are experiencing healing in your body, please post it in the comments to testify. Um, I'm telling you, the Lord told me the morning um, that Roe v. Wade was overturned. He woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and he said very clearly, I even had to grab my phone to to put it down so that I would not forget. He said, you have entered the era of exploits. And he said, there is much work to be done. And he said, consecrate yourself for tomorrow. I will do miracles among you. And the Lord has told me for years now, I've been prophesying about the, the end of, of Roe v. Wade. And um, he, even in the first word that Elijah List picked up, which was uh, the shock wave heard around the world, it's pinned on my uh, Facebook page. He said that, um, he said, you will see the land cleansed from the 
innocent bloodshed of 70 million aborted babies. And he said, and I will send you America, my great evangelist nation, first into your own land and then back into the world, said the Lord. And he said, and with this would come a wave of signs and wonders, the likes of which we have never seen. And guys, look, and the Lord also told me that at Pentecost, when the early church was given birth to, right, all those years ago in Jerusalem, um, the reason why they walked in so much power was because they understood covenant. Yes. They understood covenant. They were dead to themselves. They lived uncompromised lives, sold out for Jesus who had died for them and for their fellow man. And that is why they walked in so much power. And the same is going to be true of this remnant that God is rising up in this end time move of God. And you all are a part of it. We all have a part to play. It is all hands on deck. Yesterday, um, after we found out about Roe being, being overturned, I kept hearing Holy Spirit sing this old children's song to me. And I said, he said, post row, it's time to row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh, merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. And I was praying into that and asking God, what do you mean by that? And it's so funny. My husband was um, looking up the song to try to find the the roots, like where the, that song came from. And one of the a variation in that song is row, row, row your boat gently to the shore. If you see a, a lion, open up and roar. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like that caught my attention. And, you know, I wore my mama bear shirt today and I wore my lion of Judah earrings because it's time for the mama bears to arise. Amen. It's time for the lioness, the lionesses and the lions to roar and to echo the roar of their King Jesus. We cannot sit back and be silent any longer. And um, the row, row, row your boat. I was um, praying into that and he was saying that, uh, you know, in a rowboat, it's a synchronized effort of unity between other people in the same boat rowing with you to get to a destination. And he was saying that in this movement that is coming of his spirit to restore his house, his family, right? That we're going to have to row together. We're going to have to be willing to be submitted to each other in brotherly love, to pick up whatever it is of our assignment and to handle that thing with care, to get in synchronicity with each other, to work together, to put our effort into it together so that we can get to the place where God has called us to be. And it's all going to be on the river of his spirit. Amen. We're going to go with the flow of his spirit. We're not going to kick against the pricks. Amen. We're going to, we're going to ride on the waves of what he is doing and not try to get to our own place in our timing, but in his timing as we work diligently with him and with each other. And he said, and in that there is going to be so much joy and merriment. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be like those who dreams according to Psalm 126, that when they, our captivity ended and we were returned to Zion, we were like those who dreamed, right? Like we are in a season of where, you know, I know in so many believers, we have this kingdom seed on the inside of us. It's so big. And we know that God created us for something more, that there's something in us that's so big because he put it there and it's just waiting to get out. And that is the dream. That is daddy God's dream for you that he planted in you to walk walk out this side of heaven to impact the world for his glory. Right. And um, it's 
totally unique to each one of us. And I feel like there are people on here, you're listening and what I'm saying, your heart is literally burning. You feel that ache in your belly. You know that you were created for more, right? And the Lord is calling you in this season. Hey guys, that right there, that is going to be your compass to show you where your rowboat is so that you can hop in and you can start working with me and working with the body of Christ that I call you with to do this thing, to accomplish what I placed in you. It is going to be a season of dreams coming into reality, the manifestation of God's dreams for you coming true. Amen. And you are not going to fail. I mean, you guys can literally go back and you can read almost every single major prophetic word that God has given me over the last two years. And he is talking about everything that is happening right now. And he's talking about everything that is going to come and how he is going to provide for his kids. He is going to provide for for his kids, his people that are in covenant with him to accomplish things that would have been totally impossible outside of his assistance. Amen. Because if it's if you, it's possible for you to do on your own, it's probably not a God dream. Amen. Amen. Like we, we, he is going to be the one. Keep him as your center focus. Seek Seek the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. And we're going to see these things come to pass. Amen. Okay. And so guys, with that, I just feel like I'm, I'm going to open up. I want Danielle to speak and I want Monica to speak because with post row, we can't, we have to talk about the issue of foster care and adoption and creating a culture of life. Amen. <laughs> Y'all have been invited into we meet as a leadership team on Wednesdays, and this is what it's like every Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> we can go for hours. We do sometimes go up to three hours long because we just are like swirly with each other. I just I love that we get to do this with all of you today. Um, I just want to take a moment because I haven't seen you sisters since Roe v. Wade was overturned. And if you can just turn your mic on for a minute. Let's just celebrate for a minute. And everybody else in your house, let's just Yay. give the Lord a shout. Because yes. 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 It's like that that parable of the eleventh hour workers that came in. We celebrate together of what God has done Come on. in our nation. So I even yesterday when we found out, I was just like weeping and celebrating. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much work to be done. I'm weeping and celebrating. So much work to be done. But I just I want to just yeah take. I wanted to take a moment to say let's celebrate what He did. Um, Amen. But the word that has been stirring in my heart. I spent this week, the Lord led me into a fast and through Friday. I knew I was ending Friday night, not knowing it was going to be turned over on Friday. So I broke it a little early, of course. Um, but what I've been, I've been in the book of Joshua during um, Passover, you know, a few months ago, and then the Lord brought me back into Joshua again. And of course, Esther. And um, something I just want to read out of Joshua 1, 13 through 15, it says, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. 
But you shall pass before your brethren armed and all your mighty men of valor and help them. I'm pulling that out right now and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you. And they also have taken possession of the land which your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side of the Jordan toward the sunrise. And I think the sunrise and the sunset is highlighted throughout Joshua, just like the dream that Krista had, which we need to repost again. But that dream where the sun was resting on our shoulders at the end of it just made me think of it. But that passage, and then even in Joshua 18, it says, um, there were seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua said to the children, how long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you? So this is what I believe the Lord's saying. And I feel chills right now <laughs> reading this. The word of the Lord is weighty. You know, it, he wants us to tremble at his word. And um I launched the wall movement my whole life. I knew I'd be doing a nonprofit or having a nonprofit at some point, but I did not think at 32 years old, I was around, I was about to turn 32 and we were having a night of prayer with college campus leaders across the nation. I was in Colorado Springs living um, and with the team with Lou Engel and the call and contend. And man, I've spent years <laughs> praying at the Supreme Court and praying those judges into place with Lou and all these things. But we were doing a lot of college campus ministry and raising up houses of prayer, but we're having a, a time of prayer. And I see the map of America and I hear God say audibly 3,200 churches. And I was like, what? <laughs> we're praying for college campuses and I've never had a heart for the church. Why are you talking to me about the church Lord? <laughs> and he said, I'm calling for a wall of protection to be built around our nation in the spirit, just like Nehemiah, they prayed and I'm sorry, they built with two hands and I think it represents prayer and they had a weapon in their hand. So they had a weapon and they're building the wall at the same time. And I think it's both. We need prayer, but we need to be willing to be the answer to the things we're praying for. And that looks like a culture of adoption. And that's not only being willing to adopt babies. It is a hundred percent that there's going to be way tons of babies coming <laughs> right now, but it's also adopting out of foster care. It's also wrapping around moms that are choosing life for their babies, teaching them how to parent, discipling them, walking alongside the men that are trying to force these women to have abortions. It's, it's a whole culture. And if you're not called to one of those, Maybe you wrap around a family and serve a family. I live with an adoptive family and I get to serve them as a single. I always try to find a family to wrap around. So it's a culture of adoption we're going after. But as we celebrate Roe v. Wade being turned over, the Lord showed me um, through actually her voice, um, another ministry we're kind of working in tandem with um, and April's on our team. And they were doing a live maybe a year ago and they said, there are 3,200 counties in America. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I had learned a year or two before that, there's 3,200 um, 3, pro-life pregnancy centers in our nation. Sorry, I'm reading. There's a comment. Yes. Amen. Um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to focus. I, I wanted everybody that is watching to be able to see that this is, this needs to happen. And you and Monica and actually Harmony, you guys are all part of this right here is reforming this issue of adoption and foster care. So, right. So it says adoption. And, oh, okay. Oh. I was going to read a bit. <laughs> yeah. Adoption and foster care needs to be front and center. As a director of a pregnancy center, many come to us wanting to find children to adopt, but the system is so difficult and expensive praying for reform in this area. And I believe women watching this call right now are going to be part of that. Like we are going to see reform in the law, but it starts in prayer. And that's what I'm calling everyone to is we're raising up and believing that God would raise up in every county and every state prayer 
whether it's just you and one other person once a month, that's what I talk about in my book. And Jenny Donnelly with her voice is trumpeting the same thing. We're asking you once a month, would you gather in your region to pray for our nation? And as you pray, God is going to birth something in you and you're going to know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I believe I had a dream one time that this family I know that's adopted several children. They said, Danielle, everyone comes to us asking us to adopt their children. We can't adopt all the children. Where is the church? And in the dream, they said, the Lord gave us the strategy. He said, raise up the praying women in every region or every county, and God will give them the solutions for their region. So as I've been reading the book of Joshua, we see as they go into battle and to conquer the land, it's different every time. The way the battle plan is a little different for every region that they're going after. Sometimes God says, you're going to do it this way. And then he says, this time, I want you to march around seven times. Like it's not the same every time. It's not the same for every region, but I believe God is birthing prayer first. And so that's my call um, to, and I want to encourage you to check out our website, um, thewallmovement.com. We have weekly activations as to how can I pray and how can I be part of this culture of adoption? How can I work in unity with pregnancy resource centers, with churches in my region, with, we have a, a network of 11 ministries right now. It will be 40 ministries within the next six months of resourcing you. How can we work together to see a whole culture shift? So that is the call. Amen. That is amazing, Danielle. And um, yeah, guys, definitely check her out. Her whole book, uh, There's Room in Your Womb, is totally prophetic. Like, front to back. The testimonies from that book are absolutely wild. She has a whole section in the book about post row. And um, she actually has a uh, Zoom meeting, I believe. And on your Instagram account, she actually reads the book. Um, so this is really incredible, guys, because when I see somebody who has actually spent time to birth a resource like a book, um, generally, you know, it's to provide for their needs, you know, the, the income off of that with, for Danielle, that is not at all the case. Um, when I found out that she was actually doing live, um, you know, reading sessions of her book, um, on social media for everybody to hear it. I knew that she just didn't, she didn't just have a book. She had something that was God inspired and it was a message for a generation to prepare them for what was coming. And, um, so, and it's, and she makes it totally free. So her, um, uh, again, all of the, information on how to get a hold of each one of these powerful ladies is all in the description on this video. So hers is the wallmovement.com. And um, you'll be able to find that again in the description on this video. Yeah, the book is listed on the website as well, just the book tab. It's called There is Room in Your Womb and it's on Amazon. Yes. Amen. And then also Monica, I want to introduce my friend, Monica, her and her husband have a ministry called abide to love. They are also, uh, they've partnered with Abby Johnson, right? Who was part of, um, the unplanned, or I guess the movie was actually based on her story. Uh, she's a, uh, she was an abortion worker who, um, ended up finding out the truth and giving her life to Jesus. And now she's a very powerful pro-life voice and, um, abide to love is, uh, the journey that they have been on is a really inspiring one, but they are literally pioneering foster care reform so that children can be intercepted before they reach the government system by the church. Monica, you want to talk more about that? Yeah, sure, friend. What an honor. I just love y'all. <laughs> it's, oh, like, okay. it's like getting together with friends, but we're with lots of people too who are becoming new friends. Um, and in, in agreement with your word, friend, I had a dream about somebody with an abscess tooth on their left side. And I said, Holy Spirit, this doesn't feel like it's for me. And so whoever got healed today, even if it's multiple people, Come you're on. on God's heart. So that's really cool. 
Um, so yes, yeah, so our organization, Abide to Love, um, is pioneering what you, I feel like the best way to explain it is a parallel to the foster care system. So we equally are, are vetting our families. We're doing home studies. We're doing um, background checks, actually probably more background checks than the foster care system does. Um, we're doing our own training that we've written. Um, but essentially, instead of hitting the state level, when a family is in crisis, we get to intercept that family. And we are raising up godly families within the body of Christ to do that job so that the child in crisis doesn't have to get to the foster care system while we also get the privilege of mentoring the biological family, which is a piece, unfortunately, that's sometimes lost in the system. Um, but we get to mentor the biological families into really into wholeness and the gospel because mm -hmm. we are a private organization. We, we get to scream the gospel at the top of our lungs and reach real wholeness, which we all know comes through Jesus alone for both bio family and for child in, in the care of the family from the church. And so that's the restore family program. We're doing that right now in Florida. Um, yeah. And so we just, we actually just opened up a chapter of abide to love in Georgia. And right now we're going after, um, actually we're preparing for babies. That's what it's called in Georgia. The Lord told us uh, that we needed to prepare for babies. So I don't even think the model or the legislation is in place in Georgia to even start that yet. And yet we're doing it in faith. Um, and so we really want to see the church step up and be the solution for family. And I love what Danny was saying, Danielle, I love what Danielle was saying earlier in terms of the culture of adoption, because I feel like a key piece is both the culture of adoption and the culture of family. Um, because what I'm seeing in a lot of families is I, I'm, I'm going to trumpet you to foster. I'm going to trumpet you to adopt. That is coming. But Sometimes I feel like where we need to, oh, we're going to need to grow as a family unit. Um, the families within the body of Christ need discipleship. <laughs> they need to grow because my husband and I say this all the time. Um, we consider foster care or, you know, family stepping up to do this kind of work or to adopt because we ourselves are an adoptive family. Um, we consider that frontline missions work. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we're training up families to be ready for that work because Jesus is the solution, but it doesn't mean we're not going to get down and get dirty. Right. And so we need to be ready for that as a body of Christ. Um, and so anyway, that's what Abide to Love does. We're actually getting ready, which is new. I haven't even shared it with y'all yet. Um, but the Lord has been really putting on our hearts, not only our Restore Family Program in Florida, but we're getting ready to do um, discipleship courses in addition to parenting with Holy Spirit, uh, we're getting ready to do discipleship courses because we thought we don't just want to train up these families in Florida. We want to give families around the nation the ability to be trained up. And I love that's exactly what Harmony is doing with Kitchen Table Kingdom is we are preparing families. We're like, hey, this is on God's heart. We're going to adopt and we're going to foster and we're going to change the whole grid of children in the United States, but we also need to be ready for the down and dirty of what that's going to look like. So we're excited. Amen, girl. Yeah. And that, that is a huge thing is discipling the family. Like mm -hmm. I, I feel like for a, a really large amount of the greater body of Christ, like we have stepped away from you know, the, what the church model was meant to be and that discipleship. Right. Mm -hmm. And we desperately need it so bad. We need people that we are called alongside of to do life with us and to help us work out the issues of our life that don't look like Jesus yet. And I, I don't think, you know, and I say this as a leader and as somebody that, you know, has a lot of exposure and influence, um, um, I still need discipleship, y'all. There's still stuff I go through and my family goes through that, you know, I, you can never get to a place where you think you've got it all figured out, you know, and this is why we need brothers and sisters in the body of Christ that love us, that believe what God says about us so that they can come to us and they can be eyes in our blind spots so that we don't ever do anything that is ultimately going to hurt us, going to hurt our brother and sister. And, you know, 
God forbid, injure the body of Christ. Like we need people that we are, you know, iron sharpens iron. And the iron, when iron sharpens iron, it's usually because it's, you know, there's an irritating edge. There's a rough edge there. And so we, but we have to be willing to submit ourselves and be humble and to be learn, you know, to learn. And I, I think, and I, Personally, I've recognized this, and then it was actually confirmed by Harmony that um, one of the hardest areas of discipleship to um, really open up a person to is when it comes to parenting. Yeah. And uh, because people don't want to hear that they're not parenting the way that Papa God parents, they take it as criticism, and a lot of times they're offended by it. But, you know, I. I figured out that, you know, the, I, the way that I parented was rooted in a lot of fear and God does not parent me with fear. And, um, so I had to learn how to let go, um, of, you know, controlling my child, right. Um, out of fear of him getting hurt or, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I had to release him in faith to God. And I had to build intimacy with my child to where um, I knew that I could trust him even in difficult situations because I had raised him in love and not in fear. Amen. And so, and I'm still learning that. I, actually, my husband and I just had a session with Harmony um, at the Women's Summit because we're constantly growing. And so I want you guys that are watching to take special note, please, of Monica and of Harmony. And I want you to get their resources. If you want to have a household that is filled with the peace of God, you want to experience grace and your relationships within your family, under your roof, right? And you might even be watching this and thinking like, you know, I would love to foster or adopt, but, um, you know, my family is so crazy and chaotic. There's no way I could add another person to this mess. Or maybe you are just really sick and tired of some cycles that you're seeing happen within your family unit. Monica and Harmony are both discipling family right now. And, um, I want you to take advantage of the fact that, they have resources that are available to us as the body of Christ and their gifts. So Harmony, do you want to touch on that? And then we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. I actually wanted to address something that hasn't been spoken on. There's, there's, um, you know, there's a, a, a a movement a a great web of, of, um, assignment and all the, all the puzzle pieces, right? So one of the puzzle pieces we need to address is that, Yesterday, when we were all rejoicing that the the uh, for the overturn of Roe versus Wade, there were children, <clears throat> teenage boys and girls, who were trafficked into slavery and who were criminalized into the um, into the juvenile criminal system. And the reason they were criminalized and trafficked is because uh, their the skills don't necessarily, they're not being taught. The skills of parenting these children who are, whose, their hearts are already broken. These children are carrying great trauma. They're carrying great pain. They've been abused. They've been neglected. They've been raped. They've been assaulted. And and they come into homes, into homes of people who love them. And I might be speaking to a family right now who's on the verge of something we call um, placement disruption. Placement disruption happens when a child has very extreme behaviors and the family doesn't have the skill set necessary to meet the needs of that child. And so the child's behavior escalates, the adult's responses escalate, and the child ends up being sent back to DHS. That's what we call it here, the Department of Human Resources here in in, um, the United States or in Oregon. Some places we call it CPS, Child Protective Services. But the child is displaced. And if the child is 12 or 13 or 14 years old, what happens is most often, if it is a girl, the child will run away before they can be sent back to the system. 
And when they're, when they run away, there's actually a demonic assignment in the second heaven that the child would be trafficked. So this is a constant cycle, a funnel from foster care through displacement and into trafficking. And then for boys who are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, there's also a funnel system into homelessness and into criminal activity. And we, we actually need to rise up and train one another and come alongside one another, to, first and foremost, to handle the trauma of our biological children. To, to just to be honest, let's, let's just be honest, right? Let's be real with one another. Our own children have experienced trauma. I grew up with a loving family and still experienced trauma and carried the orphan spirit. And I had escalated behaviors. I had something called oppositional defiance disorder before that was a thing, you know, before we gave children labels. But I was, I was a very challenging child, a hurting child. And God has given specific people in the body of Christ a skill set that needs to be released. And that that's the purpose of Kitchen Table Kingdom. It's to bring healing and empowerment first to parents so that we don't end up in the situation where children are being trafficked, where biological children are continuing to be re-traumatized, or where foster and adoptive children are are being funneled into these broken into these broken situations and into greater trauma. So that's the reason I wrote Kitchen Table Kingdom and I want to encourage anyone who's on the verge of place, placement disruption. You are not alone. You are not alone and I am begging you to fight a little longer. I am asking you as your sister in the Lord to not give up on that teenager. I know it's painful. I know that they, they cause harm sometimes. Sometimes they hurt us because they've been hurt. And I'm asking you not to give up. It's worth it. Think about Jesus washing the feet of Judas. Think about Jesus on the cross saying, Father, Papa, Abba, forgive them because they do not know what they're doing. Look into the eyes of your broken child and release over them that same blessing. Abba, I forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. And then reach out for help. Because the, the, the peace that we don't want to forget as a group of leadership here, we don't want to forget that if we don't parent the generation that already exists, if we do not parent the children who are on the streets right now, in 30 years, abortion will come back. They will be the generation who brings it back. So I'm asking you to do hard things, as we have all said, come alongside a single mom, come alongside a woman choosing life, Come alongside a family that is choosing to foster and don't give up. If you are fostering and adopting, we love you. We celebrate you. We, we champion you and you are not alone. Reach out today for help and prayer and intervention. We're here for you. Amen. That is so good. You know, not many people know this, but I was one of those kids. Um, I had went through sexual abuse, then had terrible trauma, had, uh, was sexually assaulted at 12, um, had a stillborn baby at 13, uh, and ran away from God and felt that I couldn't trust my parents. Um, so started running away from home, was getting kicked out of schools, and I was just in terrible pain. I was suicidal. Um, I was a full-blown drug addict before the age of 18 and was living on the streets because um, nobody could keep me. And um, even my, my aunt tried to take custody of me for a while and um, it just never worked. So I was literally one of those kids. And so whoever is watching this today and 
you know, you see one of those teenagers, you see one of those kids. I want you to look at me and I want you to see what God has done in my life. And I want you the next time you see one of those people to know that they could be somebody else that has just as much impact for God, that they were created for a great purpose, that God loves them, and that beneath all of those behaviors is really a really broken heart and a person that is in deep agonizing pain and they don't know how to escape it. And, you know, what ended up being um, the thing that healed my heart was encountering the love of Father God. I encountered the love of Father God where he told me who I was and he broke off the false identities and he began to heal my broken heart. But he did that in a great way through people in the body of Christ. I was even just thinking this morning about the first church that I went to. And, you know, when I was fresh off the streets, I literally had track marks and scabs all over my face. I ha- I was homeless. I had, uh, I was very, very poor. And I had my two little kids with me. And my husband was, when he came with me to church, he was either high because he was struggling to get clean or he wasn't at church at all. And, um, I, I, the clothes that I wore were very offensive. They had lots of, I had, you know, metal shirts on with demons and, you know, shorts because I didn't have anything else. I was poor. I couldn't go purchase nice clothes. I, I had literally shoplifted my wedding ring guys. Like I, that, that is where I was at in life. And when I married my husband, it was literally because I was just trying to do one right thing to honor God in our lives and couldn't afford a wedding ring. So I shoplifted one. I mean, this is where I was at all those years ago, but there were people there that had so much grace and mercy towards me and they didn't judge me. They took me out to eat afterwards and they complimented me or they saw me struggling with my kids and they would come up and gently remind me that I didn't have to control my hyperactive two-year-old because he wasn't bothering them during service so that I could rest. I had women show up at my house that first Christmas when I couldn't afford presents with bags full of clothes and full of toys and with a Christmas tree because we were literally sleeping on the floor. (laughs) Um, And I had women who did not judge me and did not outright call out my sin that I was obviously still struggling with. Instead, they would sit with me and they would open up the word of God. They would open up the word of God and they would say, they would read it with me. And as they read it with me, the Holy Spirit would begin to convict me about what was in my life that needed to to look like Jesus, what was in my life that did not belong in my life, because that was not who Christ had created me to be as a new creation species. And um, so church, that that's where we need to be. Um, and you know, if maybe you are somebody watching this and you are that person, you are that single mom, you are that troubled teenager, and um, you have felt um, rejected and ostracized by the church on behalf of the church, I ask you to forgive us. We repent. 
You are valuable. You are precious. You are not the sum of your mistakes. You are not the sin that has been done to you by other people. You are a child of God that is precious and you are somebody that Jesus paid the highest price to have relationship with. And um, I just break every false identity off of you. And Holy Spirit, I even just ask right now, God, and I just feel like this is where we should close. Lord, that in the days ahead, now that we are post row, we recognize that we need to work together. We need to work together in unity um, to love each other as you have loved us. God, I pray that you would rise up, that you would raise up within the remnant mighty men and women of valor that will be spiritual mothers and fathers to an orphan generation. God, I pray that each person under the sound of my voice, wherever their heart has been broken, wherever there has been a fracture, wherever they have had to endure the consequences of a culture of death, God, that you would begin to seep your healing oil into those places of their heart. God, that you would give them a new heart, that you would give them a new mindset, Lord. God, that those maybe are watching and you're like, where, where are the spiritual mothers and fathers? Father, I pray right now that you would ekbalo, that you would violently thrust spiritual mothers and fathers into the lives of those that are watching right now. And God, I pray that um the the men that are watching that you will be mo- that you will be fathers that pursue relationship with spiritual children. The spiritual mothers on this broadcast, I pray that you would prophesy destiny into the lives of spiritual children and that you would pursue relationship with them in Jesus name. Wow. God, and I pray for each son and daughter on this broadcast that they would honor their mother and father and that it would go well with them in the land that you are giving them. God, teach us as sons and daughters how to have honor for the generation before us. Teach us how to be humble so that we might be taught and be discipled because we don't know it all. Give give us humble, teachable hearts, Lord. And Father, I pray that in the days ahead that you would begin to mend families that you would mend families. God, come and heal your family. Heal the body of Christ. Bring us together. God, I just ask for that spirit of volunteerism to fall on us, that we're willing to give our lives for something greater. And Lord, I pray that no one would be left behind, not one little one. Do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think or imagine. And God, I just thank you. I thank you again for resurrection life that you are loosing across our nation in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Well, everybody, that was a really long broadcast, and but there's so much in it and so many amazing nuggets. And I hope that you guys got some strategy. I hope that you got some hope. I thought I hope that you are going to take away from this some action steps moving forward. And those action steps really might look like you just being discipled. It may really just look like you pursuing getting heart healing 
thing. You know, for others of us, it may look like dedicating one hour a week in our region to prayer and to fasting. You know, for others of us, it may look like being prepared to receive foster care and, and adopting children. For others, it's, it's going to be taking mountains of government and getting involved in our local school boards. It's going to be getting involved in local politics so that there are righteous people in these seats of government to protect the gates of our nation. Amen. Um, it, it could look like, you know, you're a kingdom financer and you sewing into the lives of other people who are taking on these issues that God has put on your heart to do. Amen. There are so many different ways that we as individuals can get involved to be a solution to the crisis that we are in right now. And so it is definitely a season of celebration, but it is also a season of guys. It is all hands on deck and you are important and the body of Christ needs you. The Lord has need of you. And so he is loosing you in this hour, as our sister Genevieve Skidmore would say, he has need of you. And so guys, we love you. We love you. We love you. We bless you in Jesus mighty name. Go follow my sisters. We have all the details in the description on this video, and we will see you all soon. Okay? Toodaloo!